I will start with the lecture now. So, uh, so I just wanted to say like what I'm going to cover, uh, you know, next. So I will talk about what is data analysis, why is it important, what is the process that we are basically following, what are the types of uh, data analysis, like Python that is used for data analysis, so what are the packages that are used, and some practice exercises that we will be doing later on in the session. So if I miss out on any question that is there in the chat, I will take it up like once my slides are over. So uh, don't think I'm going to miss out on any questions. So I just wanted to confirm before uh, starting the session. So, um, you know, uh, now, uh, so it will be more like something like a discussion. I really don't want to, you know, just go through the slides and, you know, talk about, uh, you know, what uh, data analysis is. Because, you know, if you will Google, then you will find like a very uh, typical meaning. So I, what I personally believe, like working as a professional in a data science department, I have realized actually data science is an art of telling a story. So, you know, you basically get data from different sources. So there's like enormous amount of data. So if you, if you will Google, then you will get this number as well that, you know, there is 2.2 quintillion uh, bytes of data that is like collected every day. So this is the kind of statistics that you will be getting. But the point is that how we can utilize that data. So obviously, there is data which is like correct. There is data which is not correct as well. So the point over here is that you would need to collect the data that is required for you and bring out some useful information so that you can make some kind of informed decision when you have the data with you. So companies are actually leveraging data nowadays to actually make informed decisions. They're trying to access the data. So this skill has actually become very popular nowadays in the industry. And everybody is actually looking for those people who can analyze the data very well. So this is the first thing that we call as data analysis. Uh, this is the first step to data analysis. If I go on to my next slide. So what is the data analysis process that we are following? So I don't want to take you like step by step, like what is what is the process that, uh, you know, actually uh, like the theory part is something that I really don't want to cover. So, you know, what happens is like when you're working in the industry, right? So we get a question, a question comes to us and we kind of have a discussion. So the first point is that we need to figure out, is this a data science problem? Can this be actually solved using data science? So this is the biggest question that we need to answer. I know that we have got like a problem statement and then we just do not know like how we are going to actually solve this problem using data science. Suppose you have figured that thing out. You have understood that, okay, this is a data science problem that I have got. And then once you have the problem with you, then you will have to think about what are the data sources that will be required to solve this problem. So there are multiple sources. I'm telling you, it, it may seem like very uh, simple. So sometimes what happens, people just pick up one data set from the Google. And uh, then what will happen, they will try to, you know, analyze it. They will try to make graphs out of it. Uh, you know, and then, you know, they will just post it. And that is a very nice analysis. I, I, I would really say that is a very nice analysis. But when you're solving a real world problem, it's not like you're going to get each and every information just through one data source. So you have so many, so many data sources, and you should know how to integrate them together. You should know how to create a master data pipeline so that all the data sources can be integrated. Now the question is, how is the data collected? So you shouldn't, you should actually go for some kind of open source data that, that is there. So if you're working in the industry, the client might provide you data. So, you know, there are surveys that happens, people take interviews. So data is in different shape and form. So if you're taking interview, then what, what kind of data are you collecting? So you have data in the form of text, right? So if, you if you're collecting something like, you know, images of like, uh, you know, your area, so if you're collecting like images of your area, then you have data in the form of images. So, you know, you know, currently I'm working on a project which is related to image analytics. So I'm getting images as, you know, my data set. So there are a number of ways that you can collect the data. So even, even, you know, if I just talk about my real life experience, I think. So my mother basically, you know, she, she takes care of a medical shop. So she, she, you know, writes down which medicines are being taken out every day. So, you know, she, she will write down according to the days. 
So that is also a kind of data that she is actually noting down every day. Now what happens is once we have the data, we have got it. Okay, we have understood that, you know, I have this requirement. I have collected the data from different, different sources and I can actually combine this data together. So I have created a pipeline in my um, Python and, uh, you know, there's one master data set created like by joining different um, data sets. So I think a lot of people miss out on one of the very important part of data analysis that is cleaning the data. So what do we do? We have the data ready with us. We have got it. We don't check it. We will just start analyzing the data. This is one of the biggest problems. So today in my exercises also, I'm going to tell you how to approach a data. Once it comes to you, then how do you approach it? Like how do you actually understand that if there are any errors in the data or not? Because clean data set is not something that you're going to get ever in the industry, ever. Just make sure that you need to check data from whichever source is it coming. Even if your client is giving your data, you cannot rely on it like 100%. You need to do some wrangling to your data in order to get some information out of it. So now that you've got it, you have actually cleaned the data, you've understood like different ways. So I'm 100% I'm sure like everyone can have like different ways of, you know, dealing with the data. But, uh, you know, so, so it may happen that you think that your data is like completely wrangled. So, you know, you think that, you know, you have like an absolutely uh, like clean data set, but it may not be clean. You, you may out on some things or something which you may, which, you know, once you're analyzing the data, then you may have to go back to check it. Oh, so, you know, this is the kind of thing. So you, you thought that your data is clean, you started analyzing your data and then you realize, oh, my data is like, there's again some problem. So you again go back to the data cleaning stage. So that is the process that we basically follow. So when I talk about data analysis, like how do we analyze the data? Now, now you've got the clean data. Set. So it's not compulsory that you have to use, you know, tools like Python or R programming or something like that in order to analyze the data. So, so you know, there are basic Excel tools also, like, you know, Excel also provides like, a lot of functionality to, you know, analyze the data. I know people who can wrangle the complete data on the, on an Excel sheet. So, so I would, I would say that Excel is also a very powerful tool. There are people who will use Tableau. So, you know, it's a, it's a great way of presenting a story. So, you know, that way you can present like a story, but in Python, what happens is that you can get like basic analysis very, very quickly. So, you know, this is a, a very big advantage uh, of Python. And uh, then you can also create like models later on. If you want to create models out of that, you can, you can do that also. So once you've got like, you know, you've done your analysis and then the actual part, comes in. that's what I tell that you have to present your story after that. So once you're done with your analysis, then there comes the part that you are telling, okay, this happened from this error to this error, to this error, to this error. So, you know, it, it has to be systematic. There needs to be a timeline defined and then you need to present it as a story. So, you know, data is converted into a story and that is what data analysis is all about. So uh, this is the process that we follow in data analysis. The next thing that I will be talking about. So, why is data analysis basically important? Obviously, we know that we have like presented a story and everything. Fine. That's that's fine. Now what? Right? That that story is presented to the client. And now what? So I will just try to give you an example. Suppose I'm working in, you know, so suppose I'm an owner of a hotel or a restaurant. Okay. So Every day I'm taking reviews from my customers. So, you know, I have multiple customers coming in and, uh, you know, I basically ask them that, um, okay, can you please give me reviews? So there are people who will, give, who will be like, you know, your cleaning was nice, your service was bad. And this is the kind of review. So I have like a checkbox kind of thing. And with that, I am like asking every customer to actually checkbox like, okay, cleaning was nice, this thing was bad, something like that. So... Uh, so suppose I'm working on three factors, cleanliness, service, and uh, something like um, uh, something like laundry. Okay, so it, it, suppose I'm working on uh, these three factors, and um, 
my customer is coming in and then, you know, my customer, I'm, I'm asking my customer to actually check box. So he's telling that, you know, for cleaning, I'm giving you like a, a tick, but for, you know, laundry, I'm giving you, uh, you know, a cross. So that way I've collected my data. Now, once I have my data, what will I do? I will try to see, okay, uh, you know, there, there are genuine. So first thing is like, you need to check your data. Is the customer genuine? Is like, you know, th there are no like... Uh, one customer has not given the reviews twice. So those are the kind of things that, those are the kind of checks that I'll put on my data. So once I clean my data, what will I do? I will understand the number of customers who feel that cleaning is like a good service in my uh, hotel. And there are uh, things that I will understand that, okay, you know, my laundry service is not good. So what will I do? I will try to see what kind of customers are actually saying that my laundry service was not good. So I will try to make better, I will try to improve my laundry service. So I will target my customer and I will try to make a better decision. Of it. So once you have actually, you, you're done analyzing the data, you need to make a decision. So that's how the cycle actually completes. So the cycle completes when you actually, you know, decide on the action that needs to be taken. So uh, I'm, I'm also like thinking that I'm using very, you know, expensive machines for my laundry, but, you know, it is not like, you know, giving me very good results. Like people are saying that it's tearing the clothes or something like that. So you also need to analyze that what kind of laundry machines will be needed so that even the cost can be optimized and, and I can give better services also. So you can reduce operational costs. You can, it's, it's better at problem solving. So, you know, you get very, very accurate results based on uh, data analysis. So you, you've got a story. So the outcome may work, the outcome may not also work. So it's, it's not a definite process. Everybody has a different way of thinking, the different way of like analyzing a business problem. So a good data uh, analyst is that you actually target what's, the problem you you target on that once the analysis is done so that is why data analysis is important that is where your skills come that is where the data scientist skills actually come in the picture so if i go on to the next thing now you know that you know the process that needs to be followed how you're going to you know do it like what what is it like uh, you know required for so the next question is that how are you going to analyze your data so that is the type of data analysis that, you know, that you can perform. So, uh, you know, what happens? So there is diagnostic analysis, there is predictive analysis, there is prescriptive analysis, and there is statistical analysis. So I will, you know, take you through these, like, uh, you know, not like in detail, but yeah, I will talk about it like in general. So when I talk about uh, diagnostic analysis, then, you know, the name itself says that you are trying to diagnose a problem. Why did this happen? So you're trying to diagnose some kind of problems, okay? So using insights gained from statistical analysis. So ideally what happens is that analysts actually find patterns from the past. They will find patterns from the past and they will see like, you know, if those problems actually exist in my present. So, you know, they will try to see, like, they will try to analyze the past and see if there are, like, any, uh, you know, uh, problems that, uh, any challenges that are being, like, faced in the current situation. So, that is the kind of, uh, that is what we call as the diagnostic analysis. One is the predictive analysis, which is very popular in the market nowadays, and also a buzzword, like, uh, you know, around. So, what is most likely to happen? That is what we call as predictive analysis is basically, you know, you have your current events and analysts predict for the future. Event. So if I talk about in layman's language, like, you know, how predictive an analysis works is basically suppose in the current uh, situation, if I'm, uh, you know, I'm using, uh, you know, some kind of, uh, so, so if I talk about like, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, analyzing some, something like ship data. So I'm seeing that, you know, how many people actually drowned, how many people survived. And based on that, I will predict that, you know, in future if the ship drowns, then how many people will survive and how many people will be dead. So I'm, I'm actually like teaching my model. So, you know, the way we teach kids, like, you know, 
I'm, if there is a kid, like, you know, we will try to teach that kid like A, B, C, D, right? So if he goes and gives an examination and if he is asked about like F, then he should be able to answer it because we have actually trained it. So, so basically we trained the, we trained the kid for like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, H till Z. And if there is anything that is asked from that, then he should be able to answer it. Anything similar to that. If, if F is written in a different pattern, then he should be able to answer it. So that is what we are trying to do in predictive analysis. And next, we'll go to uh, prescriptive analysis. So prescriptive analysis is very similar to our predictive analysis. It's very, uh, you know, similar. You are trying to, you're trying to predict like the future events only. But what is the major difference? It I would call it like, you know, in my language, I would call it, it is a more advanced version. You're actually deciding the outcome. You're actually deciding what actions need to be taken. So that is when your prescriptive analysis actually comes into picture. So it, it's like one step ahead of your predictive analysis. So that is what uh, predictive analysis uh, we can call uh, so the next thing that I will talk about is uh, statistical analysis. So this is a very popular, uh, you know, tool that like it's it is a very popular process. I would say that is uh, used nowadays. So in this, we are trying to like actually analyze the data through modeling, and then you're trying to interpret it. You're also making uh, dashboards to actually see, like you know. Uh, what is the summary of the data or maybe whatever sample that you have, like, you know, what is the conclusion of the sample that you have? So basically statistical analysis is basically of two types. So descriptive analysis and inferential analysis. Yeah. So when I talk about descriptive analysis, so what is basically descriptive analysis is, is I have my data. I try to summarize my data. So a lot of conclusions can be drawn as soon as you summarize your data, just, as soon as you summarize your data, a lot of things that you can actually, you know, understand from that data. So that is what descriptive analysis is all about. And inferential analysis is basically we take a sample set and we perform kind of a test and we try to see what is the conclusion that we have from the sample. And then we try to generalize it for the population. So suppose I'm launching a product and I'm launching the product only for like, you know, a very creamy layer. Okay, so I, I target like suppose some sample uh, people and I launch it. Like suppose, uh, you know, a very good example is like Starbucks. Suppose Starbucks is like launching a new coffee and they want to focus on like sample uh, population. So they will see like how it is working, how it is performing. Is this coffee selling, you know, is good or it is not good or something like that. So based on some kind of confidence interval, so you're 95% confident that yes, this, you know, this coffee will actually be working very well uh, if we, uh, you know, release it to a kind of population. So that is the kind of inferential analysis that we try to do. So uh, this is the types of analysis. If I just try to go a little bit more in detail and I just try to, you know, if I just try to discuss like what do we do in uh, diagnostic analysis, so how people are actually performing that diagnostic analysis. So once you have the data and you're trying to drill down, then basically what you're trying to see is you're trying to see some basic analysis like correlations. So you're seeing if two, uh, two variables are like correlated with each other. So, you know, if I talk about like, um, uh, suppose I talk about annual salary and monthly salary, right? So if uh, I have something like uh, my... Um, you know, annual salary is um, around uh, 12,000. So you can know the monthly salary. So you just divide it by 12 and then, and then you'll get it. So that is the kind of correlation. But this is very, very important because it helps to, uh, you know, it, it can be done in like various ways, actually. So, uh, you know, it helps a lot of, it helps a lot of people to actually analyze like if some shipment is slow, then why is it slow? So drilling down like on a very basic level is something that is uh, done through diagnostic analysis. So I've given an example also, SaaS company drilling down to determine which marketing activities increase trials. So that is uh, the basic uh, diagnostic analysis that uh, happens. Um, 
So the next thing is the prescriptive analysis. So, you know, I've already discussed that this one is just, uh, you know, advanced version of our predictive analysis. And uh, it actually suggests a range of uh, prescribed actions and the potential outcomes of each action. So that is what prescriptive, so it is just one step ahead. So if I talk about like an example, then I can say that a utility, utility companies, gas, gas producers, and pipeline uh, companies are doing prescriptive analysis to analyze factors that are affecting the price of oil and gas to secure the best terms and hedge risks. It also takes into consideration the actions. So that is what our prescriptive analysis is all about. Next that I have is predictive analysis. So yeah, a lot of people are actually using uh, predictive analysis. I'm sure uh, you know a lot of a lot of you have uh, you know come across this uh, predictive analysis part. Like you know you have uh, some kind of data that is of the past, and you want to basically analyze like what what it is going to be in future. So business applications like sales forecasting, risk assessment. So, you know, customer segmentation uh, to determine which leads have the best chance of converting. So predictive analytics in uh, customer success teams. So these are the kind of uh, things that uh, help in predictive analysis. So also, you know, you know, a very popular, uh, a very popular company, Netflix actually uses predictive analysis to curate user experiences. Yeah, so you know, Netflix is actually Netflix actually uses uh, you know analytics model to you know curate for the user experience. So even in healthcare, uh, healthcare sectors, we can see that uh, you know a lot of strategies are basically built you know to uh, based on the predictive analysis. So uh, anyone here works in uh, healthcare department and. Uh, wants to you know share like uh, an experience like a personal experience since you know a lot of people have uh, data analysis experience over here and uh, how they are using uh, predictive analysis or somebody has worked on a similar project so i would really like to discuss one project i think i did way back in my university days i remember that uh, you know uh, we used to uh, collect data about like uh, about person's uh, health actually so you know what, what is his bmi what is his weight and everything so those are the kind of uh, you know uh, statistic that we would take what is your height what is your weight you know if if uh, if you have um, uh, what is your bmi and uh, you know how how many times do you exercise or you do you not exercise so some basic information we used to collect and based on that uh, information, you know, we used to tell like if that person has the risk of, you know, any heart disease. And also there was the kind of recommendation system, what kind of food you can eat. So what kind of food you should eat if you have like this much, uh, you know, if, if what, based on the statistics that uh, you have. So uh, this was a small project that was uh, done by us. So industries are actually, you know, leveraging uh, a lot of data nowadays to actually do a lot of like good work in the healthcare department. So anyone who, you know, uh, has some experience, I would really like to hear it. So, you know, before the session ends, you can, you can definitely share. So um, that is, uh, that is about the predictive analysis. The next we'll talk about is basically uh, statistical analysis. So I think a lot of people nowadays are using like statistical analysis. So what, what are they doing? They're actually collecting and analyzing data to identify trends. So uh, I'm sure a lot of people have actually heard about hypothesis testing. So, you know, all that statistics, the basic statistics of hypothesis testing, creating t-test and, uh, you know, z-test and everything. So that comes in in uh, under statistical test uh, statistical analysis. So what do we do in statistical analysis? So if I take you like from the beginning, is basically that we do have our data. We try to summarize the data, try to bring it in its simplest form, and then we try to you know try to create a dashboard. We try to see reports related to that. We try to see how much sales we have. What are the business applications? So these are the business applications that you have for like descriptive analysis. So you're trying to actually just summarize your data in its simplest form to actually check the data. So that is the statistical analysis that you do for descriptive analysis. The next is inferential. So inferential I've already talked about. So you're taking a sample and you're trying to see if something works for the sample. 
it, then you're trying to release it to the bigger bigger picture. You're trying to see like if, if it's working for like a sample, then it will work for the population. So you create like a hypothesis testing for that. So this is a very, uh, you know, in this, you don't even have to create a model and you can actually draw very useful and powerful conclusions with statistical analysis. So this is a very popular thing that is being used in the market nowadays. Uh, that is uh, the statistical analysis part. So uh, the next that I'm going to take you is, uh, I'm going to talk about is Python. So uh, Python, I think is, uh, you know, as you already know, is a very flexible language. Uh, so uh, can, uh, you know, some of you like put in the chat, like if anyone has used uh, Python before and what platform are they using? Like I, I'm I'm asking in the sense that are you using Jupyter Notebook or you're using something like PyCharm? Like so, so that I just know that what you're used to. Or if you're not using anything and you're just new to Python, just write I'm new to Python. I just want to understand like, you know, uh, what is uh, like on which platform are you working on? Like when it comes to Python, because. Today, I will be demonstrating uh, an exercise on a Jupyter Notebook. So, uh, okay, yeah, some people are using Kaggle kernels. Okay, the lab, I need to Python. Okay. Okay, so I think uh, most of the people are using uh, Jupyter, and some of them are obviously new to Python. So, you know, just uh, just so that like I have a very limited time, so I cannot like you know help you through like installing Jupyter, Jupyter if you do not have it. But I would really like to introduce what what it looks like and you know how it works. So once I'm demonstrating the exercise, then I will uh, tell you about like how Jupyter works and you know some 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 basics of that, so that uh, you know we are all on the same page. And uh, how like we work with Python uh, on the uh, Jupyter notebook. So today I will be using Python on uh, Python on Jupyter. So I'm using Anaconda, and with Anaconda I'm uh, going to uh, open my uh, Jupyter notebook. So uh, on Jupyter notebook, what is it that we are trying to uh, basically? Um, so first of all, I would really like to say that if you are a data analyst, it doesn't mean that you actually need to be good at programming. Okay, that is a very wrong notion. Programming is a skill, obviously, you should know the basic skills, but data analysis in itself is a skill. Like, you know, some people can analyze something very critically, and they do not have background of programming at all. I know that, um, I know I've been working in an industry. There are people who did not know Python at all, and they are working so well on image analytics uh, projects. So, um, so you know, you kind of need like good programming skills when it comes to image analytics while creating pipelines. But I have seen people like they will they the analysis is so strong that you know. So I think the code writing part is very simple and it's very uh, you know basic. So, so, so you do not need a way. So even for Python, I do not, I would, I am also not a developer. So, you know, even I learned Python, like, you know, just way back in 2018, I started learning Python. And I realized that I do not need to be a developer when I'm learning Python. Obviously, when, you know, there are people who design like pipelines and all. So, so you know, they do expect some kind of sophisticated pipelines, but you do not need to be a programmer when it comes to, you know, uh, you know, data analysis. So you can use very basic uh, programs, very basic commands, and that should be it. I think that will help you to actually work with uh, your um, data analysis. So one thing that I would I would say that you know one package that you that one library that you actually require is basically pandas, and the other one is numpy. So what is basically pandas? So what happens is is um, when we are analyzing a data, so we can see like a CSV, right? So we know what a CSV file is. So CSV file is, is something that we are comfortable with, like when we work on it, okay? So even in Python, we can in, like, you know, actually, uh, you know, try to analyze a data in a similar way, something that will look like CSV. But what we call it is a data frame, actually. So for data frame, we actually use a library that is pandas. So everything that you will see, all your data in a tabular format, and that can be like analyzed like further. So you know, pandas is a very uh, powerful library. 
Next comes like the NumPy. So it works with basically arrays. Arrays is one kind of data, again, a data type when it comes to, um, you know, Python. So, which is, uh, you know, much faster. So uh, once you actually work with it and you will understand, so it, it is kind of like mathemat mathematical library, like performing mathematical operations. So that is what NumPy is all about. So uh, it's all about mathematics and statistics, they, like the data analysis part. So once we're doing it in Python, you will realize that you do not need like some, uh, you know, extraordinary skills, like extraordinary Python skills to actually deal with it. So I will try to, you know, take you through some of the exercises uh, of data analysis uh, and uh, try to make it like simple for you. So today, what I'm going to demonstrate, okay, so I actually talked about the entire data analysis process, okay, I know a lot of people here must be expecting that, you know, I'm going to take you through like, uh, you know, the entire exploration of the data doing EDA part, and then how data will be ready, working with the missing values, uh, and then the outliers, those people who have like some background, but uh, you know, that is like one part, I think uh, that is also one of the like very important part when it comes to data analysis. But today, I really don't want to talk about that because what I have realized is something like those kind of steps and those kind of some those uh, steps are basically available online. Also, if you check like even medium daily people write like wonderful articles like stating that how you can explore your data. So today I just wanted to, you know, take a different track. And I basically wanted to understand how you can actually approach a data. So that is something that is more important for me because I remember like, you know, when I was, you know, yeah, when I started working uh, with the data, I would literally like just pick up the data and, you know, try to start analyzing it. But I think that is not the correct approach. So first is that you need to approach your data. You need to look at the data and see what you can bring out of the data. So what is what is the maximum, uh, you know, outcome or maximum, um, I would say, uh, decision that you can make or maximum conclusion that you can draw out of the data. So uh, that is something that I will try to, uh, you know, dive deep into is about how you can approach the data. So I uh, told that a lot of people haven't used Jupyter. So just a quick brief about like how Jupyter works. So what happens, we have different cells like this. So we have different cells over here. So we write a Python program like in this cell. So suppose I, I'm mentioning a data type, which is a string. So I just say like name string, something like that. And uh, then I can use shift enter to run it. Also, if, uh, so, you know, once you have like a number here, this signifies that you have actually run this cell already. So you have different, different cells where you can, you know, now if I want to print A, then I can just print A over here. So this will, this will show me that Nancy is like printed. So you have different cells over here. You can also run it from like above. So there's a run command also, right? So there's a plus sign. Uh, so if you, if you press this plus sign, then you can, uh, you know, a new cell will be actually uh, inserted. And if you want to, you know, put the cell up, then you can actually just do this. So, you know, the cell will actually go up. Also, like, uh, you know, if you just want to use the shortcuts and not use the keys above, and if you want to insert a cell like above, then you can press escape first. So it will go uh, from the command mode and press A. So you can, you can see a cell is like, you know, inserted above. If you want to sell, if you want to insert a cell below, then you can just uh, press escape and uh, press B. So, you know, a cell will be inserted below. So these are like some of the shortcut commands. All the programming will be, uh, you know, written on this uh, command line. So this is just like a brief introduction about uh, how Jupyter looks like, just to get familiar for those who haven't used it. And, um, now I will take you through this uh, exercise part and I hope that you can, uh, you know, find something uh, different uh, through this exercise, like uh, analysis, which uh, I have like tried to do in, in a little different way. So uh, what I have taken is a very cliched uh, Titanic machine learning data set, which was, uh, you know, uh, which is available on Kaggle. So, you know, th there are uh, different actually, uh, you know, 
so, so you can see there are different versions of Titanic data sets now. So I had this one downloaded on my system actually. So I have been using this one only. So if you, if you go on this Kaggle link and you do not find the similar data set, then it may be like similar, but some of, some of the uh, you know variables must be extra or something like that. Because they have actually released a lot of like similar versions of Titanic data set. So this actually goes back to like um, our uh, Titanic. Everybody knows about the Titanic ship. It sank after colliding with an iceberg, killing 1502 out of... Uh, triple two four uh, passengers and uh, that was a tragedy that occurred way back uh, you know on 15th April 1912. So the first thing that you need to approach when once you have the data is actually read about it is like you have to think okay I've got the Titanic data set what does it mean so if it's available online please read about it like you know what does uh, you know uh, your data set actually means like what is the background of the data set so, you know, this is a Titanic example. So if I talk about something like weather data, so suppose you've got like weather for like some country like UK or something like that, right? So what you have to do is basically go and read what kind of like weather that is usually seen. Suppose you have it like for the month of April or June. So go back and read. Like if you do not know what kind of weather actually like exists over there, go back and read about it. So that you know, first thing is like knowing about your data, like a complete knowledge about your data, a little bit history. And that is why I have actually written like a little bit history, a little bit background about what my data is. So any good data analyst will know about the background, in and out about the background. And then he will actually move on to what going, what's going to come next. Anything that you want to predict, you want to, you have to know about the past. So this is the first step when it comes to data analysis. Okay. So now that I know about like, you know, what is the background of my data? The next thing that I will do is basically try to see like, uh, first I will try to load my uh, data. So uh, you can you can see that I'm loading, uh, you know, so I have a Titanic underscore new data set. So sorry, I'll just. So I have imported a package like my, like Pandas package, obviously because we are going to work with the data frame. And I have, uh, you know, imported matplotlib over here. So matplotlib is basically for, uh, you know, anything, visual, any visualization that you want to do. So you can do using matplotlib. So at this point of time, and also like, you know, you can use a NumPy. So, uh, you know, that is uh, also something that you can use. Just a quick, uh, you know, knowledge about uh, the Jupyter Notebook. Suppose you want to comment like two, three cells like together. So, you know, you can select them and just do uh, control uh, question mark and then, you know, you can comment it together. If you want to like uncomment it, you can just do control question mark and that is a shortcut just for like we want to know. Uh, so, uh, so once you have imported the packages, it is very important to first import the packages that are required. If you don't import it, it will just say that there is no package like that. So any new notebook that you open, so first import your packages. And once you have imported the packages, then the next thing that you will be doing is you will be, uh, you know, for you will be now analyzing your data. So uh, I have this Titanic data set, which is in CSV format. So I told you that, uh, you know, anything that is in, uh, you know, CSV format, we will try to, uh, we will try to keep it that way. How our, uh, you know, uh, data basically looks like. So uh, what did I do? So if I just do skip, uh, escape, sorry, and I just insert a cell below. So if I run this, and then what will happen is something that I want to look at how my data looks like, right? So if I want to print like first five, uh, first five uh, rows of my data set, I will do titanic.head. So this way I can see that, uh, you know, I have like a data set that is, uh, you know, uh, titanic.head, which actually has a few columns, columns that are also known as attributes. So whenever someone says, what are the attributes that are there in your data set? So that they are actually talking about the columns over here. So here I can see that, you know, uh, I have columns like survived, P class, what is the sex of uh, people who were there, age. And something like SI, BSP, PARCH, FAIR, Embargo. Okay. Now, this is something, this can have any name. People will use all kinds of names over here. Okay. 
the first thing is to find out what each column actually means. So you need to describe each column. You need to know the background and history of each column that you have. Okay, so now when I will look at it, so first thing is I will talk about survival. So it is actually Boolean and it says if a passenger has survived or a passenger has not survived. And then I will look at P class, that is passenger's uh, cabin class. Then it is the sex, that is the sex, and that is the gender of the passenger. And then it is the age, then it is SIBSP. So, you know, this, if you read it for the first time, I'm sure no one can actually figure out what this is. But this actually means number of siblings of spouses that were there on the ship. So, aboard. So, you know, number of uh, siblings or spouses. When you look at parts, then it, then again, you'll see like what exactly is parts. So P-A-R is for parents, C-H is for children. The number of parents or children that were there. Fare of the uh, fare, that is the ticket fare. Embarked is abbreviation for port of embarkation. Class is basically passengers cabin class. So basically who is there? So man, women, children who are actually there. Adult underscore male, this is a Boolean. So like if, a, if it's an adult male or not an adult male, so it is, it'll be in the form of true false. And then basically the deck, embark town, that is the name of port or uh, port of embarkation. Uh, so alive, if the passenger was alive or not alive, if he was alone or not alone, and what is the name of the passenger? So you have to know about each and every attribute that is given to you. That is the, that is the first important thing that you need to have when you're analyzing your data. Right. So once I have my data, you do head. Head will actually print the first five rows. Suppose you want to print like first 10 rows, you can do head 10 over here. So this will print like first 10 rows. If you want to print like last 10, then you can just do tail. So that will give you the last 10 rows. So now once you have the data ready with you, it looks like the way just CSV looks. It's a tabular format. And this is what we call as our data frame. And now, first thing is that we check our data. We check if the data is correct or not correct. How do we check the data? That is the approach that we need to take. How do we actually check our data? That is, we make questions out of data. The next thing is, how do we make questions out of data? So, first we do a free analysis, very basic analysis. We'll see what are the um, other, uh, you know, uh, you know, what are the variables which are integer, float, object, categorical. So, you know, since the audience is too silent, I have like a quick question for the audience and I want the answer in the chat. Uh, so, the question is, what is the difference between categorical variable and ordinal variable? Like for those who have a little bit background. So just to give you a brief, so there are two types of variables. One is the numeric variable that contains like float and int. Float will be like in terms of decimal and int will be like the integer. When we talk about categorical, so something that has categories like 0, 1, low, high, medium, something like that. So in terms of categorical variable, we have basically two, uh, two basically sections that is categorical variable and ordinal variable. And when it comes to numerical, then it's kind of continuous and discrete. So I have a quick question for the audience. What is the difference between categorical and ordinal variable? Anyone can unmute if you want to write on chat. Okay with me. Uh, in categorical variable, uh, the names and uh, uh, places and all those stuff will come in categorical. But whereas in ordinal, uh, it it comes to ranking. Uh, ranking like uh, um, that. Uh, very high, high, low, very low, and uh, that that comes in the ordinal variable. Absolutely right. So you know, when uh, you know I, so when when I <clears throat> look at this uh, categorical and uh, you know ordinal, so so you know categorical is basically so when we talk about like survive, so it is just zero and one. So you know it does not have like a order defined to it. But on the other hand, if I talk about class, so somebody can be like in the high class, low class, medium class. So, so there's something, some kind of order that is defined. Like low, high, medium, we know is like a kind of order. So, so they both actually, you know, they both, both they both are actually like a part of categorical. And uh, so, when we talk about numerical, then uh, you know something that is like continuous, then we will call it as uh, you know uh, 
something like age that will be like a continuous variable. You know, it will uh, it will take like a shape of a normalized uh, curve, some something uh, you know in that way. And something when we talk about like discrete, then maybe zero, one, two, three, four. So, so discrete values that are um, assigned. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the next thing that we see is basically the info of the uh, Titanic data set. So, you know, as soon as I look at the info, then I know that, uh, okay, survive this in the form of integer, P class is in the form of integer, I can see, you know, the sex is in the form of object, age is like, you know, float, and uh, and so on, right? One conclusion that you can draw, so age has 715 not null values. So basically, rest of them are basically none in the case of age. Similarly, in the case of deck, also we can see that uh, you know two zero four uh, you know values are present. Rest of them are none. Uh, and then when we see for the embark, then we are seeing like uh, eight hundred and ninety. It means like two values are missing. And embark town also. So a powerful conclusion that you can draw is like you know maybe embark and embark town is something that is related, something that you need to inspect. Right. So this is the first thing. Like as soon as you look at your data, your analysis should start. Okay. Like, you know, embark, there's like 890, embark town is 890. Two values are missing for both of them. Maybe they are related. Right. So something that you will inspect later. So uh, then what do you do? The next thing is you try to see the distribution of your numerical variables. So when you use titanic.describe function, what does your titanic.describe function basically do? is basically it will try to extract all the uh, it will try to extract a summary from the data so this is the most powerful thing i would say and you can draw a lot of conclusions just by looking at the summary okay so uh, you know i i have actually written down like some kind of conclusions but just look by looking at this summary so i will just give you a brief about it so numerical variables in our case was survive age, um, you know, about siblings, uh, parents, children, fair. So it actually gives you like the count, the count that is there in the data frame, just in case you want to, you know, look at what is a number of rows and columns that are there in your data frame. So if, if you want to look at like, what is the shape of your data frame, what you have to do is basically you have to do uh, Titanic dot shape. So dot shape, what will it give you? Now I can see that there are 892 passengers, that is 892 rows that are present. So, so you know, when you're presenting your data, you don't have to say that there are 892 rows in my data set. So you, 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 it is actually what the summary of the passengers who have survived or not survived. So you can say that, you know, I have a sample data set of 892 passengers with around 16 attributes. So the, that is the kind of, uh, you know, language that you have to use while presenting an analysis in, um, to the client if you're presenting. So when I'm looking at my titanic.describe, then I can see that I have uh, some attributes. So dot describe what it does is basically considers only the numerical variables, only the numerical variables in our uh, data frame. And basically it will give you a summary. So it will give you the count. What is the mean? What is the standard deviation? What is, you know, the minimum value? What is like the 25% the 25%? What is 50%? What is 75% and the max value? So just by looking at this, can, you know, some of you like tell me like some kind of conclusion that you can draw? Like, obviously I have written down my observation, but I would really like to know, like, you know, what is the kind of observation that you think uh, you can draw from this. Mm. Uh, yes, yeah. Mm. Yes, what? So, so, a general conclusion will be there. So, uh, maximum age was 80 uh, in the Titanic strip. Then, okay. um, the minimum age was uh, is this is 0.42. No? Um, Absolutely, that's a very nice conclusion, actually. Um, then P class, uh, so, so first of all, we need to identify that P class, save SP, and then touch what those, uh, you know, column names are uh, meaning, first of all. Yeah. Uh, so we need to like draw conclusions about it, like what, what does this uh, part actually like means? 
exactly actually we have to process we Sorry. have to take care about only survived one which are survived why? and all why aren't you seeing who are not survived can i can i ask you this question because that is our conclusion no yeah we are seeing the survive but we are doing a complete analysis so you need to take both of them into like consideration pavan to your question it's not like a standardization but it's it's, it's more like you're trying to bring out like a initial summary of the data initial statistic like this initial summary that is there right so that is what uh, this is actually and uh, i think vishinath you have said that ma'am how come minimum age is like 0.42 so you know it's like a newborn baby right so it is not even one year old so that can be point four two right so if i talk about just in years so you you talking about 80 years old so it can be like just point four two it's just like a small baby so that, that is how it's point four two and um, anything else that uh, i get ma'am fair value can have a player Oh, yeah. because yeah, I, yes, yeah um, I will talk about Neha. I'll talk about outlier part, which is a very good point, I think. Yeah, so uh, you know, obviously, outlier is a very uh, you know, it it is like obviously you can say that there are outliers, but before like drawing, so what do you think Neha an outlier is actually? So you know, Neha, if if I if I talk about what an outlier is. Can can uh, can you tell me? Uh, yeah, ma'am. If uh the like uh the values of a variable like be uh like fall in a like if it is right uh it is skewed at the in the right, right direction, like if has a, a value beyond the qual quartile range, far away from the third quartile range, then it can fall under the outliers. Outliers. Okay, so you're saying basically like greater than three sigma. So, uh, for those uh, people like you know who who have no idea about like uh, what she's saying, like basically like greater than three sigma, you can leave it for now. But I just want to, since she has brought it up, like what an outlier is, I want to explain actually. So there's a wrong notion also about an outlier. Okay, so outlier is something that is you know what we call is a wrong value. Okay. So suppose somebody suppose you talk about fair, right? That's what you you said me that you know you, I can see a lot of outliers based on maybe you've seen like the maximum value as five hundred and twelve dollars. Okay, so now I can say that there is some person who's paying five hundred and twelve dollars maybe to take like a very luxurious you know seat in the ship. Okay, so he is actually paying it. So that is not a wrong data. It is a correct data. Okay, so when it is a correct data, right? So, so you know, when you like doing an analysis, we call it an outlier. But something that is correct is not something that we can say like you know something that we can remove it like straight away or something like that, right? So something that needs to be inspected further. You cannot really draw a conclusion that this is an outlier and we should remove it. No, because it is a correct value. He is paying for it. So you need to analyze in that form, in that sense also, right? See, suppose uh, you know somebody. Suppose you know my minimum age would be zero. Okay, so that we can say is a wrong data because obviously a person didn't exist only, right? So the zero is like he was not like there's nothing. So that is something that you're short short saying that that is a wrong data. But for an outlier, you need to inspect. Like if it is an outlier or it is not an outlier, so I I wouldn't recommend that you you know you just go like and remove it and treat it as an outlier. First you inspect and then say it is an outlier or not an outlier. So um, I hope like that is a little bit clear to you, Neha. Like you know if if it's a right value or a wrong value, like that is yeah yeah got it. So when I look at my data over here, so I have taken like a sample data, eight ninety two passengers. Okay, now the first thing that I talked about that we are taking just the sample. So if you know, if you have the knowledge of the data, like that I talked about like earlier, we we said that there were like triple to four passengers. Out of that, there is a sample of only eight ninety two. That is forty percent of the data. 
so we are actually trying to draw a conclusion that with that sample we are saying that whatever we are generalizing for this sample will be true for the entire population okay this is the first thing so survived is a categorical variable min and max value if you check is basically zero so you know uh, we can say that it is a categorical variable between zero and one okay uh, someone uh, okay i'll come to this later so pairs are varying actually significantly. So there is someone who is paying minimum zero and somebody who is paying minimum 512, which we cannot short short say that 512 is a wrong value. We first need to inspect that. Minimum age is 0 0.42. Obviously, it can be like a small baby who is there. So, you know, you can you cannot say anything about it. Elderly passengers within the age of 65 to 80 is, uh, you know, there are few elderly passengers. Why we are saying that? Because if you just look at the age, then you can see that, you know, mean value is like 29.72 and even the median 50% is around 28. Only one maximum value that you can see around 80. So, you know, on an average, there are like uh, middle-aged people that are there on the ship. And we can see that there are only 715 available values for age. So, there are obviously some missing values that are there for our age. So, this is the initial analysis that we have from the describe that we have. Okay, the next thing that we'll go on to is our distribution for the categorical variables. So um, basically the categories that are there. So you use again the describe method and then uh, you use include that is include O. So when you actually do include O, that is basically object. O stands for object over here. So when you do O, then you can say that for the object column. So basically we have sex, embarked, class, food, deck, embark underscore town alive and me right so these are the kind of uh, you know uh, this thing these are the kind of uh, variables that i have so when you are analyzing the categorical data you have count unique top and frequency so what does this actually say count is again the number of variables that are uh, basically like number of rows that are missing or they're not missing so for embark you can see two are missing and uh, for deck there are a lot of uh, values that are missing so how many unique values that we have in our data? So when I look at this, then I know that there are unique four values of sex in the data. Okay. Whereas, you know, it should be just male and female. Then why there are four values? So something that needs to be inspected. And also frequency, it is, it is saying 574 for male, right? So frequency is like whatever is the top value, the top value is male. Then how many times is it occurring? That is what this frequency tells, right? So we can say that now they are saying that male is occurring 574 times, whereas unique value is 4. So this is something that needs to be inspected. Okay, so you leave it and you, you, you say that, you know, some values are like wrong over here. Some, some male is written like in, you know, two, two different formats. So now we see embarked. Embarked, we see two are missing and there are three types. Embarked underscore town is like seven types and two are missing. Something that we, we cannot like state like, you know, anything right now. But if we are seeing embark underscore town and embark is related, then why there are seven categories in embark underscore town? Again, needs to be inspected. Okay. So now in the name, we can see that, you know, there's some name over here that is uh, Mr. Carl Hovell. And we can see that frequency is two. So one name is basically repeated two times. So if one name is repeated two times, then you need to see that is it like something that is like, because, you know, uh, for you know that the data was basically unique on the passengers, right? It was unique on the passenger name. So it was the passenger data. So there's no ID that is given in this. So in this case, we are taking name into consideration. So if it is unique on the name, then why there are two passengers, why two passengers of the same name? Is it the same passenger? Is it a duplicate data that needs to re be removed? Again, this needs to be inspected. So first from the describe, describe method only, we can see like there are so many conclusions that we can draw when we are actually looking at our data. So this is the first thing. This is the first approach that you need to take. What is the conclusion that you can draw from just looking at your data? Okay. The next thing is that inspecting your name. So we will start with this because this was our uh, first, uh, you know, something that was, uh, you know, the first thing that had to be inspected. So that is the name. Now, there are a few things that I want to, you know, actually talk about that is something related to Python. Um, 
that is something related to pythons so after that i will tell you how to in, how to actually inspect this name so before inspecting the name i would really recommend that uh, you know there are some things uh, that you can you should know about python first thing is the string function okay so suppose i have a string so, so let's just pick up this string only okay so i have this as a string we call this as a a string correct now suppose i have to split the string okay so now what happens suppose i want uh, so all the names this is basically the last name they just the analysis so how you, how you can analyze it so you can do titanic uh, titanic dot head and just analyze first few rows now you can see there's a pattern in the name so this is basically the last name this is basically the title that is mr and this is basically the first name so there's a pattern that you can observe so these are the kind of observation a data analyst has to make like it's not something that will you know that has some definite way or something it's just something that you need to you need to actually analyze small small patterns that are basically there okay so in order to analyze the name what do we do we first try to split the last name the title and the first name so you can use any approach i'm telling you this is not the only way to do it this is what i have used just to you know demonstrate so what i basically do suppose i'm splitting so i need to split my first name last name and my title so if i use like a split function so you know what will what split does is basically so this normal split will actually split on uh, you know the uh, space that i have okay now if i want to use a delimiter suppose i want to split everything on this comma like i want to separate everything like from this comma and what will i do i will just use a delimiter which is a comma so my string will basically return like a list of two different uh, you know names so so basically b b e h r is now uh, you know on like list 0 and list 1 has mr carl hobby so these are the two things that i have in my uh, this thing now Uh, so now i've got my last name that is already there so that so you know how to actually access the list is basically so if you want to access the first index of the list so that is the zeroth index so if you do zero then you basically get what is known as the uh, last name right and if you if i just you know try to uh, see like what is there in you know my first um, you know index then uh, then i can see that i have the title and uh, the first name so this is basically the last name and this is the first name that i've got so now i have the first name now further what i want to do is basically separate the title and the first name so what exactly will i do i will try to use a split again this is a string again so it has returned a string again so now what i'm going to do i'm going to use a split function again so i'm going to use split now what will i split on so basically i want to split on the dot because dot is something that will separate the title and the first name so i will use this now this has separated again made into two strings now my title will be the first string that will be the zeroth and my uh, uh and my this thing will be the second uh second part of the list this will be my first name so that's how i'm getting my uh, last name my title and my first name so this is how string operation is performed next thing that i want to talk about is lambda function something that is lambda function so that this is something which is very uh, you know very very uh, significant when it comes to you know uh, significant and very useful actually very useful so suppose i have uh, you know uh, something like um, it may be a little bit like uh, more advanced when it comes to you know when i'm talking about the lambda function but uh, you know it won't be like really difficult to understand suppose there's some kind of operation that i want to perform on each row on each row suppose like uh, if i if i just pick up like age and i want to add like you know one to age like suppose you know it is all 22 20 38 26 it's just an example obviously there will be better ways of doing it but since i want to explain like uh, what lambda function is 
then I will just like pick up age. So I want like everything should be increased by one. Every year should be increased by one. So what I can do is basically I can, uh, you know, uh, like write, suppose Titanic, uh, Titanic. And I can write age. And after that, I can basically apply the same, uh, you know, so I can apply a lambda function to this. So it performs like a parallel operation, parallel operation on each row. Like, so suppose I'm doing it on age, so it will be performing on each row. So how does it apply? So you will use dot apply lambda x such that what, what do you want to return? x plus 2. So x plus 1, suppose we just want to, we just want to, you know, increase the age by 1. So suppose I just give this a name, like suppose something like, experiment something like that so that it's not overwritten uh, and then I just run it and then if I try to you know check this what this exp looks like then you can see that something that was 22 has become 23 38 has become 39 so it, it performs kind of a parallel operation on each on each row that is what lambda function basically does so this is uh, you know what I have used and I've also shown you string operation how to separate your last, first, and title. So what I've done is basically I've tried to separate names. So I have tried to separate the name and I've tried to find out the title. Title, which will be uh, basically my split string. That, that this is the same string that, you know, this is the string that it is basically using. So for the title, it is this string. And um, for last name, it is basically the string that is, which is above this uh, this string that is there, and uh, for the first name, it is the second string, like just on the similar pattern, in the same pattern, right? So this is what my lambda function is basically using, and I've got something like uh, you know like something. So I've so I've got three variables that will be that I'm calling it as uh, call title. So now what this concat basically does, so uh, in already existing data frame, so if you want to add any, uh, you know, uh, columns, then you can just use pd.concat and it will parallelly add columns. So now you can see first name, last name and type. So these three are basically concatenated in my Titanic data set. So, uh, yeah, Varsha, you can use uh, X plus plus for increment. That is like for sure you can, uh, you know, that is just the way of typing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bali Ram, I'll, I'll get back to that. I'll get back to your question. I'll go back to since we're in the middle of some analysis. Uh, I will get back to that question. So, uh, yeah, uh, the point is that, uh, you know, I have uh, concatenated first name, last name, and uh, the title. So uh, now I have this data set prepared. So now first name, last name, and title, we have actually split. So what we can do is we can drop the initial name column because that is a redundant information now. That is something that we do not require. So now it, this gives us more flexibility. So if we are trying to analyze anything with the name, this is giving us more flexibility. So the next thing that I want to inspect is basically the titles. So, you know, why I have split it to like analyze, I'll tell you like a reason also. So we knew that there was one column that was getting repeated over here. There was one column that was getting repeated. So if there is something like a different pattern that is written to the title, suppose there is Mr. Okay. Some people can write it like a spelling also, like a Mr. kind of spelling and those kind of things. So the name won't change, but title may be something that, that can be changed, right? So for inspecting, we need to split it and then see the title. Maybe the, maybe the spelling of the name is written like wrong or something like that. So to inspect it, what you do is for basically first split it and then try to actually, you know, analyze what the name is all about, right? So now when I check basically my name, now I can see that for my title, there are these many titles, Mr., Miss, Mrs., Master, Doctor, Rev, Major. So these are the titles that I have. Okay, some of the type of titles I already knew that they exist, but some of them I actually did not know. Like what, what is the meaning of those titles? So I actually Googled it. So just like to save time, like, uh, you know, some of them like the common titles like Doctor, Major. So, so those are something that I will skip. 
those uh, titles which I think we are we are all doubtful about is something that we will inspect. So I actually try to Google and see like you know if they actually exist or not. If these are the titles which actually exist. So when I tried to see Dev, Dev was something that actually existed, and I went and I read about like Reverend. So the Dev is basically used for a Reverend in a honorific style. So it, it it has got some Greek meaning, but yes, it exists. Okay. So, um, so dev is something that was correct. So the dev title actually existed. What about the rest? So when I tried to actually look back, then I realized basically MLLE is basically used for miss. Countess is basically used for miss. Lady is used for miss. MME is used for miss. And Don is used for mister. So what do we do? We try to replace these values so that redundant information is less in the data. Like there, it makes like more sense in the data. So some, uh, uh, you know, a sync is basically maintained. So that is why I try to, uh, you know, change uh, some of the, uh, you know, basically I change some of the titles over here. So uh, what do I do? I, I changed some of the titles and uh, then later on, what do I do? I drop my name column. So when you use access equal to one with a uh, drop, then, you know, it will, it will drop like a column. If you use axis equal to zero, then it will drop a row. And in place is equal to true is like it will, you know, replace everything in the existing data frame. So that is what is the error that I was getting on my name. So, you know, now that I'm done with, uh, you know, um, so the replacement of my Titanic. Uh, so, so, you know, this is a little bit more in sync when it comes to the title. So this is the kind of error that we actually saw that was present. And we try to correct that error, right? So the next thing that we will actually check is basically, so so basically the name is now corrected. The name itself is corrected. So, you, you know, based on the describe function that you had earlier, so name was first thing that you will inspect. So the, the name part is already inspected. Now you can pick up like something next, okay? So I told you that we need to inspect embark town and embark. So if embark is three and embark town is seven, then there's something there's something that is different. Okay, there's something that needs to be inspected over here. So I will start looking at my embark town. I will pick up my next variable. So my name is done. I will pick up the next variable that is my embark town. So now when I look at embark town and try to see that why embark town is seven, then I realized is basically that there are some lexical errors. Lexical errors is basically that there are spelling errors that are basically present in my data set. So we can see that, uh, you know, Cherbog is basically written as Cherbog. So, so you know, there are some uh, Southampton is basically, so there are two different spellings written for this. So there are inconsistent, Qu Queenstown, some, it is written in small, this is written in capital. So you need to correct that part of the data. Okay, so, you know, if this is like capital, this is small, is something that you need to correct. So what will you do? You will actually try to replace. So, you know, you will try to correct the spellings of the data and you will try to do it in place is equal to true. So this is again a check that you will do based on the describe function that you had. Okay. And then if you want to check if embark town and embark is related, then you will try to make a cross tab. So what, what you will do is try to make a cross tab of Embarkton and Embark. And you can see that Cherbog is basically related to C. So, you know, C is like 168 and there's just one that is going in uh, cube. So this is also something that, that needs to be inspected or you can leave it. So one, one data, you can leave it if you have like a huge amount of data set. So Queenstown is actually all going in Q and Southampton is basically going in, um, uh, basically going in S. So this is basically related. Embark down and embark is basically related. So one of the conclusion that you can draw here and you can later on, if you can see that there is a correlation, maybe you can drop one of the variables as well. So this way you have actually made your data set even smaller. So uh, this is one approach that you can take. And next thing that I talked about was sex. So there were four different categories that we could see like related to sex. That is male, female, M and F. So M and F is basically what? Male and female only, right? So, so, you know, you do not have to have four different categories. So F can be replaced with uh, female, M can be replaced with male. Just on the basis of dot describe function, you, there, there were like further inspections made to actually check the data. So you have replaced it. Anything that you are finding your fish, you have replaced it. Now, what is the next thing that you need to do? Okay. 
So the next thing that I need to do is basically I'm trying to basically check the age. So there is some kind of like group by function. So what this group by function basically does, so I, I will try to introduce that also. So see anything. So when, when I talk about, uh, you know, so there is a variable that was who, who basically tells if there was a man, woman or a child. Okay. So when I will try to see there's something on the value counts. What value counts is that it actually will tell you like the count of man that were there, women that were there, and child who were there. So, so it has actually given you the count, right? Now, the next thing is that you need to actually find out that, you know, so basically you want to delete two datas. So you want to actually see what is the count of man, woman, and child based on the variable age, okay? So you know that there were some missing values in age, right? So if I do group by who, so you're grouping by grouping by your man, woman, and child, and then you're trying to do count. So if you're doing like age, so according to age, I can see that there are 83 child, man 414, and woman 218. So this is what I can find out as a count based on the variable age. And you can also do like a describe function. After that, you can actually do a describe function. So now what is the conclusion that you can draw? So based on the age I can see, so if I'm seeing a child, then the maximum age is 25. But how can we say that a person is a child when the age is below 18? So why is it saying that the maximum age is 25? Something that needs to be inspected again. There's something wrong in the data, right? So this is one thing that you can do. So, you know, if, uh, so I have actually, uh, you know, Try to inspect that thing. So I have, you know, made a question that is, uh, you know, if a person is a man or a woman, if who is man or a woman, and if uh, the age is less than 18, then please return the data frame to me. So if they're returning the data frame, then I can see that if uh, female and male is there and how many people are less than basically, uh, basically 18 years of age. So what really happened, like they have just written down like, okay, if it's a man or a woman, they have written down man or a woman, but they should have actually written that it's a child. So what we need to do for this data frame that is extracted, we need to replace, we need to replace man and the woman of who with child. So this is the method you can replace it. So you are replacing it with child. So this is how you've corrected one part of the data. So there's one, so there's, there's still one error with the child group. That is one child has age that is greater, that is 25. So we are inspecting that if Titanic age is equal to equal to uh, 25 and who is a child, then uh, what is, uh, you know, the, uh, what is the row that I'm getting? So I can see that the sex is female here. So basically who should be a woman? So that is the analysis and who should actually be a woman. So what do you do? You go and replace it. So you go and replace it with the woman. So now you have uh, something that is like replaced. Now you do a cross tabulation and you try to see like, um, so child, you can see 54, 58, man is all going in man, woman is all going in female. So, so that is basically, uh, you can see that now this data is correct. You need to keep checking your data, keep checking your data at every step. The next is basically you look at, uh, you know, so there are number of ways, right? So I've, I've shown like some of them. So I have just tried to see that, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, if either one of the condition is true, like who is not equal to man and if is not equal to male, then is it like adult male? If any one of this condition is true, then can, are we getting like adult male? So if you will see like, you know, here we are seeing the sex is male and we are seeing the person is child and it's saying adult male true. Adult male should be actually false here. Why? Because, you know, uh, it cannot be like, uh, if it's a child, then it has to be false, right? So what do we do? We go and replace this with false. So we try and we go and replace this with false here just to correct our data. So, uh, you know, it, it's just like you can make multiple questions out of it. So I, I was just going on checking my data where it can go wrong. And, you know, and then you can just make like cross tabulations to see whether if it's working correctly or not. So any duplicated records. So any duplicated records on first name, last name and age. 
then I see that there is one duplicated record. This, this seems like, um, you know, so one says that he was alive, the other one says he was not alive. So, you know, this has to be, you know, something that needs to be inspected very carefully because, you know, if you're seeing an alive, then, you know, that needs to be taken into consideration. If you're saying like not alive, so this is something that is inconsistent data, something that you cannot draw any conclusion about because you cannot find any backup for this. So this is how you check your data. You can like, you know, create multiple questions. You can keep checking like, uh, you know, how your data is basically going to, uh, you know, how you can actually create questions and try to clean your data. So this was just a basic analysis. So once you get your data, how to actually approach a data, how to actually see like where there can be problems. So there can be multiple problems in the data set. So this is a very cliched data set, but I just try to bring out like a different perspective to it. So every data analyst can have like a different perspective and can actually, you know, um, you know, make your own questions. So this is just one way of analyzing. It. So yeah, um, this is it from my side. And um, uh, also I would, uh, ma'am, is there any method if I'm missing others in the column? Mm, uh, there will be data in the link. Yeah, so uh, Lehri, I think uh, missing values, I already told you, right? So when you do dot describe function only, you can actually check for the missing values. So if I, uh, you know, go back and I tell you like, you know, uh, so if you see like over here, so there's a count, right? So the count, even if it's like, no matter how huge your data set is, it is going to give you the count. So if you know that the shape is 892 and 715 values are present, that means there is something missing. So that is how you can check your missing value. So no matter how huge your data set is, it's going to give you some kind of conclusion over here. There was a question, I think, which someone asked that most passengers did not travel with uh, parents or children. Can anyone actually tell me why? So this is the column. And why have I written down this conclusion? Actually, uh, there is uh, described, right? There is 17 percentage. And in the column, uh, P-A-R-C-H, there is zero. Hmm? That's right. Okay, that can be one of the ways. Absolutely, that can be one of the ways that you can say that yeah, most of the uh, people did not travel with parents or children. Yeah, we can uh, definitely say that. So we can see here that you know the minimum value is basically zero, and even the median is basically zero. So we can see we can you know draw a kind on of, the mean value that you will see is actually you know very less as compared to the maximum that is like traveling. So we can say that most of the people do not travel with parents or children. So that can be one of the conclusions uh, that you can draw. Uh, yeah, hello, uh, ma'am. Uh, you said that you uh, you are doing image collection and then image analytics. So uh, are you doing it with uh, that? Uh, uh, MongoDB or MariaDB uh, with uh, those uh, those tools? Uh, no, no, no. Actually, we are not uh, using like MongoDB uh, as of now. So you know what we are exactly using is like for our client, and I cannot like disclose it over here. But yes, I'm doing image analytics and Python only. So but for database, I'm not using MongoDB. Okay, thank you. Ma'am, uh, how can we join the? two data sets uh, with the help of Python? So, uh, yes, actually there is a function that is merge. Okay, so if you have two data sets, like there's a function that is merge. So it, it works like in a similar way how it works in SQL. So join function basically works like on a primary key. So you basically try to find the uh, try to find two primary keys like in two data sets and you use the function merge and how you want to do it, you can specify left, how is equal to left, how is equal to right. So, so are you aware about like the SQL um, join that we use? Yes, yes, ma'am. There are uh, four or five <laughs> types of merge over here. PD .merge that you can use over here. Uh, so how should I know uh, where I stand in data analytics? Means uh, 0 to 100 in 10%, 50% and all. Yeah. How, do, uh, how should I know that? I would really recommend that you, if you've never worked like, you know, on uh, a data science problem or a data analytics problem, I would definitely say that you should actually go through, uh, you know, you should actually pick up one data set from Kaggle, any open data source that you want to pick it up from. And then 
you have to create questions. So create three basic questions and try to see that, you know, what conclusions can you draw from that? Uh, you know, what, what are the conclusions that you can draw? So if you can actually create even a small story, then yes, you're getting there. But if you're not able to understand anything from the data set, then there's something that needs to be worked on. There's there's something that you need to actually try to, you know, read a little bit more, try to know about the packages. Since the session was only for two hours, I couldn't go a lot in detail with the packages and, you know, how basically Python works and everything. But if you feel like that, then then go through like the basic Python first, you know, to how we can analyze data. So, so this was only about like analyzing data using Python. So I, I was like, I, I was sticking to the scope. But, uh, you know, you should actually start with basic Python first and then the basic data analysis and then try to relate both of them. So, uh, means I have done up to the machine learning. I means I applied all the data, means uh, uh, cleaning and processing. After that, I use machine learning, means all that means algorithms to navy bias, k-means and all. So, means after that, I didn't get anything, means I check on the internet explorer youtube and all and i didn't get after that means what will be the next procedure for that one to so move to the data I, I really want to know what you were trying to find like after you had done the analysis using machine learning what is it that you were trying to find is my question yeah means uh, i just get the means algorithms means accuracy like 70 78% yeah, 72% and all. but i didn't uh, get clear idea means what should i have to do next after that just like that uh, shubham i would really say that suppose you've got the accuracy right then go back what were you trying to predict suppose if i am teaching you something and then i'm taking your test and you get 60% in the test then why is that 40% lagging, right? I won't say that it should be 100% because I think that, that way the model, like, you know, it's really like overfitting. But, you know, if you have something lagging, then you go back and check, okay, that if there is 60% accuracy, where is that problem occurring? So once you have answer to that, then I think you will be able to draw conclusion. You need to keep questioning yourself. See, data analysis is not a definite process. I cannot teach you this is how you can analyze. I told you this is an approach that I'm showing you. After that, it's on you to basically understand how you can take your approach. So if there is some problem, then why that problem is occurring? If there is like 80% accuracy also, then how that 80% accuracy is occurring? So if you're, if you know, you are like predicting for something like zero and one, and if it's an unbalanced data set, then, you know, even if your initial data set is giving just 20% accuracy and you are getting like 60%, then that is really good. So those are the kind of questions that you need to ask yourself, I think, before, uh, you know, drawing any conclusion, like how you should do it. So it's, it's a, totally on you. Like you have to create the questions and the problems basically that are up there. Thank you. Thank you, Sina. Hello, ma'am. This is otherwise. Uh, can I ask one question? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, first of all, thank you so much for the session. It was really informative. Uh, I just wanted to know, like, I have I've been uh, working in advanced Excel Power BI. So there are similar kind of operations that we were that we did today, like similar kind of operations, like string concatenations or uh, uh, DAX formulas we have for Power BI. So, like from the data set, if I, if I got some data set, then uh, how to choose an exact tool for this? Like we have similar operation in Python also, we have similar operation in Power BI also. Then how can I choose exact tool which will make my analysis perfect? See, there is no definite, you know, answer. Like I'll tell you why. Because um, see, if you're using tools, like what is it that you want to give? So I remember I was working, uh, you know, for a freelancing project like long back. So they just wanted me to present an ana analysis on like a presentation slide, right? So, you know, a quick way would be that, you know, if I use something like Power BI, I do like, you know, wrangling or any string uh, concatenation, any, any function that I need to perform, just I do it on Power BI. And I present like, so once the data is wrangled there, I can just draw charts and, you know, something that I want to present and I can show it on like PPT, right? So that will be like a more efficient process for me. Whereas there was another client who wanted me to build a model. So I did not think that it was very efficient for me to use a Power BI there. 
So in that case, I would do my initial analysis on Python, build a model there. So what is it that you want as your end goal is basically something that you need to look at. That's Understood. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the basic um, so the basic has been easy enough or anything else to this we need to learn more. Uh, okay, I think uh, if you have basic knowledge of Python, uh, MySQL, uh, EDA, uh, so I think that is like more than enough to actually get like at least 50% 50, 50 of the analysis. I'm telling you, 50 to 60 percent of the analysis, you just have it. So, if you have like this much knowledge, I think that that is like really good. I think 50 percent. I actually I'm saying less only. I think this covers up like for the 70 percent. So I told you, like for Python, like you do not need to be a developer. So if you're doing data analysis, you just need to know. You just need to have that insight, like I have critical thinking that you know where you need to actually, uh, you know, what is it that you need to look at. So that is the kind of thought process that you need to have when you're doing data analysis. Uh, Mahesh, does, does that answer your question? Um, I would really say that work more and more on data sets, have wide variety of data sets. So, you know, you can actually pick up some tabular data sets from Kaggle and then, uh, you know, practice more. Like if, if you know EDA, then how much? Because every data set will have a different process, a different conclusion. So that will actually, you know, increase your learning. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, are you... Uh... Are you participating in the, those Maven analytics uh, and the, uh, all those uh, analytics uh, that uh, platforms for uh, you know publishing the uh, your uh, dashboards and all? Uh, are you are you participating in those? So yes, at this point of time, I don't think I'm participating. But I remember in my university days, I used to do it. So we we had like a group. So you know, this this actually like was a very useful thing for me. Like in a university group, we, we were like a group of students, and we would participate in such things. So at this point of time, like no, I'm not doing. It. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. I think uh, Mahesh, you can uh, refer to Kaggle. So basically, I would uh, recommend that you can you know. Go for the Kaggle that that I think you'll get like multiple data sets, like all type of data sets. So go ahead with that.